Hey guys, Jason here with the One Stop How To Guys, bringing you episode one of Advanced Drupal Development. Now, in this episode, we are going to be setting up the homepage slider content type and the homepage slider for our brand new site. Now, we're starting here because it is a good way to get back into Drupal development if you haven't done it in a while. Now, if you do not know what content types are or taxonomy terms or views, if all of that stuff is completely foreign to you, I really highly suggest that you pause this video and you go back and you watch practical Drupal development um, because we're not going to be taking the time to explain some of these basic concepts of Drupal in this series. That's kind of what that other series is for. Now, when we get into things that we have not yet talked about, such as commerce and location, We'll take the time to really dive into those modules and I'll explain them very well. But uh, the idea behind installing modules and installing um, different libraries and things like that, we're not really going to cover in this video um, or this series at all, just because, you know, that's what Practical Drupal is for. So I've installed a couple of things on this site already that you are going to need to go and grab in order to follow along in this episode. And those things are the administration menu module. Um, along with the minimal menu theme, you don't have to have that one, but I use it just because I like it. Um, C tools, link, and the wait module, entity API, entity tokens, library, views, view slideshow, um, and I will have links to all of these below. Just make sure you go out and grab them. If you don't know how to uh, install a module on your site, like I said, go back and watch Practical Drupal Development. If you do, grab those from the links below. Um, don't forget that Views Slideshow Cycle requires the Views Slideshow dot cycle or the Views the jQuery dot cycle library. So make sure you download that as well. And there is a video in Practical Drupal Development about how to do that. Um, so the first thing that we want to do real quick here is just clean off this uh, default layout. Uh, we don't need this stuff here and we don't need the powered by Drupal stuff. So let's real quick go into structured blocks and let's just clear off like the system menu. We want to make sure we leave the main page content, but the stuff in the sidebar we're going to go ahead and get rid of. And also the powered by Drupal in the footer, we're going to go ahead and get rid of that as well. So that should give us a nice clean uh, front page here. So now we're going to start by creating that home page slider content type. So structure content types, add content type. We are going to call this homepage slide, and we're going to call that because each one of these is only going to create one slide for the slideshow. We are going to say content of this type will add a slide to the homepage slider. And we're going to do that for the people who are going to actually be editing this site so they know what this is. We are going to unpublish from the front page. We're going to turn off the authoring information. We are going to close the comments. Now we are, are actually going to make them hidden. Um, we are going to leave the comment module on because we're going to use it later on in the series. And we're going to take this out of the menu. Now one thing you might notice that's different is weight is no longer a global content type option. Um, with, the, with the latest version at least, it is now a fieldable entity. So that's going to be one slight change from practical Drupal development. So we're going to save here and add fields. Now, if we go back and take a look at our website mockup, we can see we need a title, we need a body, and we need a link field. Um, and luckily, Drupal by default provides us with the title, the body, and all we need to do is add the link field and the image fields. So let's go ahead and start by adding a link field in here. And because our link has a customizable text field here, this isn't just a URL, when we save this through, we want to make sure that we actually require the title so that we don't end up with a slide that just has a long URL string as its content. 
um, we also need to add the image here. Now we are we can do this either one of two ways. We can use the existing image field that's already provided by Drupal or create another one. I'm actually going to use the existing image field. That way we actually save space within the database and we don't create another database entry and we can kind of use this same field. We're going to turn on the alt and title tags and we're going to save that. And I like to have mine underneath the title. You don't necessarily have to do that. It's just a preference of mine. So I'm just going to move it and save it. Now we will uh, be managing image crops slightly different in this series than we did in the last one. We're going to take a look at a different module that's a little bit more complex and offers more variety as far as what you can do with it. So that's why it's okay for us to reuse that image uh, field. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to add some content here to our homepage slider. And our first slide was advanced Drupal. And I'm going to grab an image here that matches that. And I got all my images from unsplash.com. It's a great place for uh, free uh, stock photos. Uh, you can go anywhere to get your images, though. It doesn't really matter. And we are going to say, learn to program like a master. And we're going to say, view courses. And for now, we're going to link this to the front page because we, uh, we really don't have any other content to link to right now. So we're going to go ahead and save that out. We're then going to add another slide just to make sure that our slideshow is working. I'm going to call this one Practical Drupal. And we're going to add another slide image here. And we'll say learn the basics of Drupal. And just for a little variety, we're going to say view this course and also link this to the front. And we're going to save that. So now let's build our slideshow. We do that by going to Structure, Views, and Add a New View. And here we're going to call this Homepage Slider. It is of type Homepage Slide. We don't need a page for this, we just need a block, and we're going to remove the title here. Instead of an unformatted list, we want to take a slideshow of fields. And we're going to continue and edit this. We already have the title in here, but we don't want this title linking to that default homepage slider node because that's kind of useless. So we're going to uncheck that and we're going to apply. And now let's add in the other fields that we're missing from this homepage slider. I'm just going to type in slide in the search box and that'll give me the body, the image, and the link as well. So we're going to remove the labels off of everything here. And we're going to set this to the large image for now. We will be changing that when we look into our image crop module that's coming up. And we want to leave the title as the link. So that's all good. Now we're going to do some reordering. And we're going to reorder this a little differently than you would think. We're actually going to put the body right before the image. And it doesn't matter really where the other two are. Now the reason for that is because if you look at our mock-up, we have this whole text section kind of in the middle of this slideshow uh, centered vertically here in the middle. Now we can do that by moving each one of these individual fields down when we use the CSS. But if this were to break off into two lines or this, it really starts causing issues within the CSS because now we have to adjust for that stuff. So what we want to do is actually wrap this whole text area collectively together and move it as if it was a single unit. So in order to do that, we're going to come into our title and we're going to exclude it from the display. We're going to come into the link and we're going to exclude that from the display as well. And then we're going to come into the body here and we're going to rewrite the results of the body. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a div in here and we're going to class it as wrapper. And then we're just going to come down to our replacement patterns and we're going to copy the body, the title, and the link. And we're going to paste those in there and get rid of this unnecessary text here that we don't need. So 
let's get that out of there. And we definitely want the body up before the link. And then we're also, to give ourselves even further control here, we're just going to wrap each one of these in a div themselves so that we can say this one has a class of title and this one has a class of body and then a class of length. And let's not forget to uh, close off our divs there. And that's just going to give us further theming control over this as well. So now we have this here. It's all wrapped together collectively in a div. And we will save this. All right, so now we're going to go into structure blocks. And mine actually is already on here because I was uh, running some practice earlier for this video and it just kind of saved the position data even though I deleted everything. But normally it will be found down here in your list. And what you're going to do is you're going to configure that block, set it to the highlighted section of the Bartik theme, and make sure that it's only available on the front page because we don't want this showing up everywhere. We just want it on the home page. So now if we go back home, we can see that we have our home page slider there. If we wait a second, that slideshow should transition just like that. This is wrapped together collectively in a div. And if we inspect the element here, uh, we can see that this in fact is wrapped together collectively in the div that we wanted. So that's perfect. The only other thing we need to do is now uh, add a weight to this. So if we go to back into structure content types, our homepage slide, and manage the fields here, remember I said that weight is no longer a global property, so we need to come in here and add a weight field, and weight is now a fieldable entity. So we're going to select weight from this. We want to make sure that it's weight selector, as that's our only option. And we're going to save that. Our range really only needs to be about five. And this is one of the nice things about um, weight being a fieldable entity. It no longer is defaulted to just 20 or 10. You can kind of limit this down to just the amount that you need. So we're going to go ahead and save that. And now that we have that in, we'll come up to content. And we're going to edit each one of our slides. We want advanced Drupal here to be our lowest negative five weight. And we want practical Drupal to be set at negative four. And that's not gonna change anything here because we in our view are still sorting this out by post date and that's not what we want. We wanna add in the sort criteria that weight field from homepage slider. And let's go ahead and save that. Leave it sorted ascending. And let's get rid of this post date here and save that. So now we have our homepage slider defaulting to the first slide that we wanted it to. And it's rotating just fine. Um, and we have our homepage slider set up. That's exactly what we were planning on doing in this video. I know it seems like a very practical Drupal place to start, but it's a great way to get our feet wet again, uh, get back into this, kind of remember how Drupal works and the structure of everything like that. So in the next video, we're going to move on to uh, probably setting up the about section so that we can get this in. We're going to add our little welcome message here and probably get this set up. Uh, so we'll see how far we get within that next video. I want to take these first couple of videos and just knock out all the practical Drupal stuff so that we can start diving into the new topics, the new advanced stuff, um, and things like that. So I hope you like this video. I hope you're kind of glad to be back into it. I know I am. Um, if you did, make sure you give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in episode two of Advanced Drupal Development. Later, guys.